Okay, so what I'm going to do today is do a knock sensor bypass on this MY99 WRX. It's got an EJ205 engine. Um, so to do that, we need the, the circuit diagram of the knock sensor. So here it is here, how it works. There's the ECU, which we'll um, uncover in a minute, and the circuit to the knock sensor. So the standard knock sensor um, just generates a small voltage when it, when it sees knock, but when they get old, uh, as these cars are quite old now, they can um, be prone to some interference, or I even pick up engine rattles with piston slap and so forth, and we can get interference and wrong readings through the computer, which can make the car run surgy and all sorts of things. So what we're going to do is we're going to completely isolate the knock sensor from the ECU. So we're going to, this, this lead here, it's a screened lead. Let's completely cut that. And we're going to make a new circuit to completely bypass it. And we're going to go through a resistor straight to ground like that. Now it's, it specifies the um, nominal resistance for the knock sensor 530 to 590 thousand ohms. So we're going to use one of these 560k ohm resistors and make a little circuit bypass. So the first thing we're going to do is just to um, get to the ECU, which is in the left hand footwell. So I just need to remove the trim. I've already unclipped it obviously. And pull the carpet back. And there's a cover for the ECU. Remove it. There it is. So there's our ECU. It's got a little plastic cover on it too. There's our three connectors. And we've got our engine management wiring diagram here. So there's our knock sensor through the our engine loom connector to the ECU. So it's telling us it's on on pin C26. Um, they do this a funny way on these later models. So it goes a C, and then we got C equals B136, which is the connector, which is this one here, blue. We got black, grey, blue, plus the check connector. So there you are, black, grey, and blue. Um, we've already disconnected the battery, so we're good to just disconnect the blue connector, which is the one we want to tap into. So this is the one here that we want, the blue connector. Just going to take it out of the ECU, like so. And I'm just going to unbind the loom a little bit too to give us some more room, so we're not putting too much pressure on it. So it's all taped up here. Pull that a bit, a bit looser now, like that. Okay, so looking back into the plug, the diagram is telling us that it's pin 26, which is this bottom corner, and that it should be yellow which it is, so that should be our knock sensor. So I've just unbound it all the way back to the main loom, which just gives us plenty of room there to play with. Um, that's our knock sensor feed wire there. This one is the shield. So what we're going to do is cut this, and I'm going to make a little um, simulator circuit 
isolate this side of it, connect our simulator between here and ground so that it thinks the um, knock sensor is just connected. Okay, so what I've got here is um, the resistor, 560k ohm resistor. And I'm going to put solder the wires onto each end. I'm going to use pink for the um, computer end. And I'm going to use black to ground it with an earth ring. I'm going to just sit the resistor inside this tube and use this old fuse clip to store it in like that. So it's going to be nice and neat and I'm just going to tape that to the loom. So first I'm just going to tin up the end of these wires. Resistor in there now. Solder on the one end. Resistors aren't polarized, so you can put them either way. Now for the other end. Like so. So there's our little circuit. We're going to put that little assembly inside this tube. So it's not a heat shrink tube, it's just a rubber tube. Just a old bit I had that fits inside that fuse clip. Secure it in there with a double hot glue. Like that. That's going to go inside here. Like that. So now I'm just going to um, put it in the car, see what it's going to fit. Okay, so we're going to have pink going to here. And just so this is out of the way, but not too far away, I think I'll just zip tie it to here. So it's only going to be, the pink lead's only going to be about that long. Luckily, it just goes to a chassis ground. So I'm just going to loop that straight around to that one there. So that'll be long enough for that one. Okay, so <clears throat> time to fit it. Got the uh, earth ring soldered on. So what we're going to do now is isolate the original circuit, which is here. Just going to chop it like so. Strip back the wire.
and we're going to solder our, solder our simulator onto there. So, push our heat shrink up there and shrink it on to the join. Like so. So what I'm going to do now is just tape off this, the original lead, just to isolate it. Just so it doesn't cause any problems down the road. So it's still got the uh, the shield connected. Which is fine. So that's that taken care of. <clears throat> now we can plug that back into our computer. Like so. So what I'm going to do now is just tape, tape this up. Basically, so it can't come undone and shorten or anything. Like that. I'll make a little tag at the same time. Screw the ring onto the earth. Table ties now, and we're done. should do fine. It's all covered with that foot plate so nothing can get damaged. So I'll wrap some tape around the loom again just to uh, keep it tidy.
and we're done. Just have to give it a try now. Okay, so the ECU is connected back up. I'll turn the battery back on. So we'll see if we can um, run the car now without the check engine light on. So there we go. Running with no faults shown. So um, all that's left to do now is to put the ECU kick panel back on and the carpet back in and job done.